authorities in Sierra Leone have buried the bodies of dozens of civilians killed during protests which turned violent in opposition strongholds. It comes amid concerns by the Breed families that six police officers who were killed in the same process were, protests were laid to rest two weeks later at a ceremony presided over by the president. While the families had also been demanding the bodies of their loved ones be handed over to them for closure, but this did not happen. Umaru Fofana was at the central mortuary as the bodies were collected and taken to the cemetery for burial by the state. After a brief interfaith service, the 27 bodies were loaded onto waiting trucks and taken to a cemetery in Waterloo, just outside the capital. There were buses to convey the families to say their final goodbyes. But why did the government not hand the bodies over to the families to bury them themselves? Mohamed Rahman Suari is the Minister of Information. It is actually a state-led barrier. The families have been working with us through the process from the identification of loved ones to post-mortem. We have had several meetings together and this was where we agreed that they will be buried by the state. But some have told me that they would rather they had been given the bodies for them to take them to their various areas of burial. I could understand those sentiments coming from bereaved families. But in the end, government also had national security considerations to take into consideration. We have seen these issues around the world. People make matadom out of um, slain persons, particularly following incidents like those. And the Australian police has very fresh memories of a similar incident that went out of hand in McKinney. They don't want a recurrence of that. And did they have to keep the bodies for more than two months to do this? The bodies had to be kept because when incidents like this happen, you have to identify who the persons were. Every as at this point, some still went unidentified. <laughs> Almost 10 weeks on, the families are still inconsolable. Hajara Tudorami, mother of 16-year-old Fatma Tudorami, said her daughter had gone out to look for her and was shot dead. Musa Papakeita, elder brother of 38-year-old Zainab, said he was unhappy because his sister was a pious Muslim whom he said was killed illegally inside her house and was buried inappropriately. It is a sad day. It is very, very sad and disheartening. I don't know how to express myself now because it is not easy for us. And it has been a while and they did not give us permission to bury our sister. The way the funeral rites was organized today did not go down well with me because we are Muslims. We only recite the Fatia. We did not perform the other rites. I'm upset right now. The state gave 20 million leons, about 1,200 US dollars, to each of the bereaved families. But the family of Hassan Dumbuya, better known as Evangelist Samson, rejected the money. His elder brother, Alusan Koroma, told me why. It's just a way of expressing our grievance towards the state that we are not happy with what they have done. We've endured the killing, but them seizing the cops. No, that one is unacceptable. Well, they say that uh, they did this with the acquiescence of the bereaved family members. No, not all the family members approved. We were there at the meeting and we disapproved. What do you make of what the minister's reason is, namely security concern for not handing the bodies over to the families? We don't accept that. It's not as a result of security concerns. What do you think is the reason? Possibly they might be viewing Evangelist Samson with a political lens. He is a political social media commentator. Evangelist Samson is well known for the APC party. Totally devastated because Evangelist Samson is a man of the family. Dozens of people are still standing trial for the events of August 10th. Some have been convicted and more are being picked up by the police for prosecution. And that was Umaru Fofana reporting.